Yeah, hi everyone, it's David here and I'm recording this on the 30th of October, 2021. And we're talking about naturopathy and how naturopathy can help all different sorts of conditions and uh, ways in which it does that and ways in particular in which MBA works with the human body, men and women, to help heal different conditions. And it doesn't matter what the condition is. It doesn't matter if the condition is the symptoms of arthritis, um, symptoms of diabetes, symptoms of um, chronic fatigue. It, they're all symptoms, but they are all coming from a cause. So we have uh, Jenny online with us today, and um, she's a wellness coach, and but she's also someone who understands a little bit about um, some of the things I'm certainly talking about the way that I work and the, from a long association. So welcome, Jenny. Thank you, David. We, uh, we shall get moving. So I'm just going to share the screen. So just so we can sort of start. And Jenny, I'm just wondering if there's conditions that you've come across that when you look at them think, yeah, you know, there's, there's different ways of healing these things rather than having to go down the medical line all the time. Yeah, there certainly is. And when you said chronic fatigue, that certainly you know, rang a few bells, not only for me personally, but also with clients that I see and, and often people experiencing anything that's got fatigue seem to sort of be hitting brick walls when they they go to their you know, normal medical practice because it's like they're in their imagination or there's nothing specific it's all those things that seem a little bit vague but yet the person experiencing them you know knows that they're very real indeed and that's and that's the difficulty with a blood test so with a blood test you can have a you know you can be suffering from something and then you find out, I've gone and got the blood test, but the blood test doesn't show anything. You know, mm -hmm. it might show slightly low iron. It might show something else just a little bit out of balance, but not major things. But the person themselves is suffering from very, very severe conditions and the blood test isn't showing it. And it just that's fuels why, them thinking that it's in their mind and they're imagining it. It's a, yeah, you know, well, then they say, suffering. you know, off to the psychiatrist because it must be in your head. Hmm. Well, it is in the head, but it's in the head for a different reason. And I'll explain that as we go along. So, so the most important thing is to understand that with naturopath, uh, what we're looking for is how can we help the physical and mental health to help people from, stop, from stop suffering? Because while I believe that pain is um, a certainty, suffering is optional in my experience. So the more that I can help someone out of pain, the more I'm actually help stopping their suffering at the same time. So that's me. We don't need to worry about me too much. I'm just putting this on so that we can talk to people and help them understand what MBA does and how we work. So one of the first things is that I use a system called RBTI and the purpose of RBTI is to check some fundamentals of a person's biochemistry. And the first fundamental that we check is water. And the reason that we check water is that water is the foundation, basically, of how well the blood is going to work. If the water level isn't right, then the blood level isn't generally going to be right. The next thing that we check is food. So understanding the food, understanding the food that somebody is eating, it may be good food, but it may not be good food for the person. So one of the areas that I specialize in is, is making sure that a person has a diet which is suitable for their own body. The next thing that we look at is the minerals because the minerals actually come out of the food, but you need the water to digest the food to get the minerals out of that food. And when the minerals aren't there, any of the minerals, calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium, iron, um, iodine, any of the minerals at all are not in their right order within the body, then the body is not going to be able to function effectively. As uh, one of my mentors, Kerry Ream said, and I just have somebody else I'm just going to admit, 
as one of my mentors, Kerry Wren, said, the minerals are the building blocks of the body. And when a mineral is missing, the body is liable to go into some sort of imbalance. And then we have enzymes. And the enzymes that the body needs are enzymes that are right for that body that it is missing. And the way that we find out what enzymes a body is missing is to look at the body and find out what the symptoms are. And that will generally tell us what the enzymes are that the body is actually missing. So more than anything, it's about knowing that every one of these systems needs to be checked. We need to check the water intake. We need to check the food intake. We need to check the mineral intake and boost up the mineral intake if needed. I use uh, colloidal minerals usually to do that. And then we need to check the enzymes that someone is taking because the enzymes are the critical factor in the body. We've done some videos and we've done a video on enzymes. We've done videos on minerals. We've done videos on food and on uh, water as well. And in order to know which enzymes to take, you have to know the condition that a person has. So the symptoms are important in that regard, but they're not important as far as the, um, the, the con condition, the sickness, the illness that someone has unless they are missing. So once we know they're missing, we just supplement with the enzymes or we get them onto the right food that has those enzymes in it. So that's the importance of the, those four building blocks. And we check those every time we're working with someone. So someone comes in, they've got some health conditions, they've got some mental health issues, or they've got some physical issues. We always use the RBTI to check where someone's biochemistry is. And we'll just go on and explain a little bit about why that is important. So these are what we call the healing zone numbers, won't worry too much, but we have a certain range that we're looking at. This is for carbohydrates. This is the pH, which is the resistance. This is about energy. This is about resistance in the body, high resistance, low resistance. This is about the salts. Now, if the salts go too high, someone can die from a heart attack, they can have a stroke. So this is about the cell debris. You want to make sure that the cell debris is coming out of the body at the right level. Otherwise, there can be a tumor building in the body. And we, we certainly want to know that so that we can help the person change that system. And then the ureas, we want to make sure that the body is getting rid of the waste effectively. And that's why we measure these things through the urine and the saliva. So the carbohydrates, when we look at the carbohydrates in the urine, we understand that there is different energy levels that are showing because of the carbohydrates. So we measure this with a refractometer. If someone has a very low energy, they can be in chronic fatigue. If they're in this sort of energy, they're in the healing zone. If they're in this sort of area, we'll often find that uh, a person's energy is dropping after they eat. And this is one of the reasons why someone can have a meal and then about an hour or so later, they just want to go lie down and have a sleep. And then we have people in the overloaded energy zone and they're up here in a pre-diabetic zone and into diabetes. Now, in Australia, population 25 million people, we have approximately 2 million diabetics and we have approximately 2 million pre-diabetic people as well. So... It, we, we aren't running short of people with diabetes. We also have, you know, over a million and so with arthritis. We have others with all different sorts of other health conditions. And one of the biggest ones that's coming on now with the, um, the baby boomers sort of generation is dementia. So all of these conditions are coming up now and it's because the energy is not regulated effectively. So to regulate the energy, we want to keep it in this zone between 1.2 and 2, and we measure that in the urine with a refractometer. We'll go into that a little bit later. But that's, that's our sort of starting point for where we're looking. Now, water. The importance of water with the energy is that if people drink too much water, 
they can actually flood their system too much and take too much energy out. What sort of water? Well, they need clean water. Now, the best sort of water is filtered water. It can be all the way up to reverse osmosis filtered water. And how often? Well, we recommend that people have water every half hour, just a small amount every half hour. And it all depends on weight. So the answer of how much is about weight. So Jenny, as a wellness coach, how, how do you regulate the water intake of people? Well, a big part of, of what I've done with people is just increasing their awareness of how much water they're drinking, because I think often people um, think they're drinking more than they actually are. Yeah. And, and so um, a starting point is really just to increase their awareness of that and then encourage them to look at ways to sort of increase that and, and then sort of. I, I totally agree it's about weight, but sometimes it takes us a while to get to that part of it because it's sometimes it's just about them having a bottle of water on their desk at work or, as you said, having a, some drinks every half an hour to an hour just to sort of get the, the levels back up to a reasonable amount and yeah. then worry about... I think probably one of the things that I see is people have got all these rules about, oh, I should, I must drink two litres every day. But if you don't know what you're currently doing, two litres can feel like a very big jump. It and does. It does. So going back here, what I find is anybody who's in this zone and up here is usually not drinking sufficient water. Mm -hmm. So we can have a 100 kilo person drinking the same amount as a 40 kilo person or 50 kilo person because they just don't know that they need to drink water. So for us, one of the ways to lower this carbohydrate level, which is the total carbohydrates in the urine, is to get people to drink water because that will immediately bring their carbohydrate level down towards this zone. And it's more inclined to keep them there. But we have a very specific amount of water. So what we're looking at is 33 mils per kilo of weight. So if someone weighs 100 kilo, that's 3.3 litres of water a day. But it's easy to do it if they divide it into 100 mils per half hour, because that will get them there. So if they just say, okay, I take my weight and I drink that amount, weight in kilos, and I drink that amount per half hour through the day. So if I'm 50 kilo, I drink 50 mil. If I'm 100 kilo, I drink 100 mil. Now, some people are 120 kilo, and they can't physically take in that amount of water. Some people are starting at half a litre of water and they've got to go up to one litre before that. And just as you said, Jenny, they go up to one litre, then they go to one and a half, then they go to two, then they go to 2.5, then they go to three litres of water. And usually if they're overweight at that stage, their weight is dropping because they're filling their body with water which is flushing things out of their body more readily. And because they're doing it systematically, the body isn't pressured or stressed by it. And it's much easier for the body to, to be able to work with that at that level. Does that make sense? Yeah, it sure does. And I think that, um, yeah, I have people say, oh, I, I drink a lot of other things because I drink, you know, coffee or whatever or tea yeah. and they think that counts, but it, yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah, and unfortunately it doesn't count. It'd be nice if it did for some people, but because they might have 10 cups of coffee a day, but it, it just does not count. Um, and the reason is that water, when it's clean water, doesn't have to be processed the same way as a, a drink does. A drink has to be digested. It has to go through more of a process. And because it's got something in it, like the coffee, or it's got uh, a sugary drink and it's got sugar and salt in it, or just sugar, or it's an electrolyte drink, it doesn't count because it's already got things dissolved into it. And the goal of putting water into the body is so that material which is in the body can be transported out of the body in the water. So increasing the water to the right level or decreasing the water to the right level means that a person is only going to be reducing through their body the things that they need to reduce 
so that their body can keep at the right balance. So we see people drop down, they might have a six carbohydrate up here somewhere, and they drop down back into this zone within a couple of weeks just by drinking water. And it's a consistency of that water that counts. So David, what do you say to someone, because this comes up quite a bit too, with people who, oh, but I've always got to go to the toilet, then I'm running to the toilet all day. And that's they see that as an inconvenience rather yeah. than a... Well, it's better than death. <laughs> uh, that, that's one area. Because if they get up to this level, the, the deterioration of their body is much, much greater. Their, um, their little capillaries start to break, the eyes start to go, the, uh, the likelihood of um, uh, a, the, a limb being amputated is increased once things go up this way and their life is shortened. So, and that's one of the reasons why men generally live five years less than women in, in uh, relationships. And it's basically because they are looking at things from the point of view of what's wrong and not wanting to do anything about it rather than, you know, oh, yeah, you know, that's just the way it is. So it's important that people understand that going to the loo is a small price to pay. And I've even had this with hairdressers and beauty therapists and, uh, and people, teachers, it's a small price to pay because we usually within 10 days, it settles down. Your body says, ah, I've got that out of the system. That's really good. I've got some salts out. I've got some sugars out. I'm reducing and my body is starting to get that fluid into it that it needs. It's rehydrating and everything is working much better. So water is a critical factor and it's, and it's the first factor we look at as far as the four building blocks goes. Does that sort of answer it, Jenny? Yeah, no, that's really good. So, so I can tell these people, be patient 10 days and it'll settle. Yeah, it'll settle. You know, provided that they're doing the other things they need to be doing because there's certain things as we go along which will also cause other problems. So we don't want those problems for people as well. So... How much? Well, 33 mils per kilo of weight. What sort? Um, filtered. The minimum a jug filter is better than nothing. And the reason is that whatever the jug, whatever the filter takes out, makes room in the water for the body to release and let go of toxic waste. Otherwise, the body is reabsorbing toxic water from the bowel constantly. And that's not what you want because that affects the liver. And how often? Well, every half hour, the right amount every half hour, build it up and get it to that level. Then what? Well, poor digestion. This is one of the things that happens in the, in the blood system. We get roulane, we get sticky blood, we get the blood sticking together and that causes elimination pressures and it causes other problems as well. And in order to get the optimal glucose and oxygen to the brain, up to the brain, you've got to have the right amount of fluids. Too much and you'll drain the body too much, too little, and the body um, just gets cloggy blood. And then that blood is hard for the heart to push around the body, which puts more pressure on the heart. So it's, it's really important from the blood flow system to have the right amount of water in the body. And I've seen it constantly with um, advice given on high blood pressure that they don't mention the you know the amount of water to drink that they are not as specific as i would like people to be if they're trying to lower their blood pressure so the food so we had water then we had food then we got minerals then we got enzymes so now we're on to food and the reason for the importance of the right food is that if somebody has the right food first thing in the morning, their energy will go up into a certain level. If they then have something at morning tea, the energy will stay level. If they then have something at lunchtime, the energy will stay level and they'll get through the afternoon to have dinner and then the energy stays level until they go to sleep. If the food isn't right for the person's body, what's going to happen is that the energy will go up. So it might be a cereal, for instance, that is on TV. 
the energy will go up and then it will begin to crash down. And when it crashes down, usually about here, about that morning tea time, need a little biscuit or a cup of tea or coffee or something just to pick up the energy. Then it goes right down. And this is where a whole lot of emotional stuff happens. This is where anxiety happens. This is where depression happens. This is where uh, nervousness and uh, real fatigue sets in if the person's not eating properly for their body. And then they'll have something and then they'll go back up again. But then because they're not eating properly, they'll go back down again. And one of the reasons for that is they don't have the enzymes they need. They don't have the right amount of hydrochloric acid in their gut. They haven't got the right food in their digestive system to help them support their body so that it stays in this highly efficient energy zone, which is where when I'm working with someone, this is the area that I want to get them to as fast as possible. And to do that, I'm basically giving them a diet and saying, okay, it's not a diet. This is a food program for the rest of your life, basically, because that program is going to help them enormously through their life just by helping them to understand that if they eat properly for their body, because each body is different, but if they eat properly for their body, their body will maintain their energy right through the day. Any nanny naps or, you know, I've had people who are 80 years old who all of a sudden have this boost of energy where they don't need a nap anymore. They don't need to have that lie down after lunch or dinner. They're, they're highly energetic still. They go for their walks. They do all sorts of things because they feel good about themselves and they feel good about their energy. Now, to get there, We've got to get the right food into the body. And that's, that's often the, the little stumbling block is to say, okay, what is the right food? Because if it's the wrong food, these are the symptoms that most people get. Muscles and joint pains, nervousness, irritability, exhaustion, weakness, faintness, dizziness, tremors, cold sweats, you know, down a depression, migraine, headaches, insomnia, not able to you know, not getting to sleep, waking up in halfway through the night, digestive disturbances, that, those are big ones. But the aches and pains, pretty well all arthritic type problems are caused by the wrong food. Diabetes is caused by the wrong food. So even things like lack of sex drive in women and men, lack of concentration, mental confusion, limited attention span is caused by the wrong food. Phobia, fears, neurodermatitis, you know, where the skin breaks out, all caused by the wrong food and by the stress. So a, a lot of people go to too many coffees or they go to much sugar, they go to the biscuits, the cakes, they, they are addicted to those things because they're looking for something to pick up their energy. And that's an indication that the food that they're eating is not the right food and they're not digesting it properly. So that's, that's the most important thing that I look for is to say, okay, I have a little form, have a look at this form, uh, tick the things that you believe you have, and then let's see how many of those are still there after a month or so on eating the right food. And mostly I've had people tick 20 different things and they've all pretty well all gone after a month because they started to eat the right food for their body. So it's really important to make sure that the food that goes into the body is the right food for the body. And unfortunately, that means it's an individual food. That's one of the reasons why we do Feed the Need is as a, um, as a program follow, you know, and including the self-hypnosis and Feed the Need, is that if I can train people how to tell what are the right foods for their body? What are the right nutrients for their body? Uh, they don't have to keep asking me because they will know themselves how to tell what those foods are. But anybody who has any of these symptoms pretty well guarantee is not eating the right food for their body. Or it may be the right food sometimes, but they're not digesting it because they're lacking minerals and enzymes. So that's the next stage as well, is to look at that from that point of view. So when the blood is thick, the oxygen and glucose isn't there for the brain. When the oxygen and glucose isn't there, um, 
what happens is that the uh, the carbohydrate level rises, the salt level rises, the ureas, which is the undigested protein particles rise. All of this puts more pressure on the heart. The heart has to beat harder. And when the heart beats harder, eventually it gets tired and stops beating. It's a major cause of pectoralis heart attacks. And as Kerry Reams, uh, my mentor said, you know, you can stop pectoralis heart attacks just by getting people to drink the right amount of water and eat the right food. So in, when we're looking at the carbohydrates, if the carbohydrates go too low, that can be death. Somebody can be having a hyperglycemic uh, event and they can die because of that, or they can go very, very high and they can die because of that. We wanna keep them here in this level, not lower than that, because lower than that and their energy is going to be depleted. Higher than that, and they start to get into a dropping energy zone where the energy isn't sustainable or an overloaded energy zone where they think they're okay. But when we do the test, we find out, nah, you're not okay. You're just high on sugar because high on sugar is like someone being high on alcohol. They, they think they're okay. If you've ever seen someone who's high on alcohol, oh no, I'm all right to drive. Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, you know, no worries about me. Don't you worry about me. No, I'm fine right, until they get picked up by, oh, well, I didn't know, officer, I really didn't, right, and that's the truth, they don't know, because they feel good, and when we see people who feel good, but their carbohydrates are quite high, we know that they are burning out their body too fast, so we look at that and say, well, okay, how can we bring this back into balance, so that their energy stays stable, the pH of the urine is about resistance in the body. So we like to keep it between 6.2 and 6.6. .6. We will measure this with a meter. If it goes too low, what happens is the food goes through the body too fast. If it goes too high, the food goes through the body too slow. Either way, the nutrients aren't being absorbed. So all the fat soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K aren't being absorbed up here. Neither are the B group vitamins. Once you go below this, absorption of the B group vitamins and the minerals begins to fall away. So it's important to get the pH of the body up to these areas. And we do that with the calcium powders more than anything else, a range of calcium powders, which we use. And that helps to rebalance the body and people just feel so much better when we do that. Then salts, which is another thing that we look at and the salt reading depends on the water. It depends on the food that is eaten. Because if somebody's, you know, picking out on corn chips every night, um, of course, they're going to have higher salt levels. You know, if they don't have enough minerals in their body, they won't have enough potassium. And that will affect the salt level as well. And they'll be spitting out too much sodium and too much potassium. So we're looking at things on an overall basis and saying, okay, what can we do about this? And how can we get this balance right? So we've got our ideal, you know, our ideal here is between six and 12C. That whole healing zone is here. And if we go too high, that again is putting more pressure on the heart because the blood is too thick. Remembering that the urine that we're measuring comes from the filtering of the blood. So all we're doing when we're doing our testing, we're finding out, is the blood too thick? Now, if the blood's too thin, the person won't have any energy. They won't get the oxygen glucose to the brain and the brain won't be able to talk to the body and the body won't be able to talk to the brain. This is chronic fatigue territory. And this, I have no doubt at all, will be long COVID syndrome territory as well. So this zone back in here, anyone with chronic fatigue is usually going to have a, a low, be in a low energy zone. And because they're in that low energy zone, their energy is not going to be stable. So they can go up a little bit, but then they'll crash down a little bit. I think the lowest I ever got uh, with the salt reading was about two. So if you can imagine the salt and the potassium, the sodium and the potassium in the, in the fluids of the body is the energy that communicates to the brain. And if it's like a battery, so our body is this electrical conductivity going on 
And if the energy doesn't get to, through to the brain, the brain doesn't know what's happening in the body. And if the brain doesn't know what's happening in the body, the brain can't correct what's happening in the body. And that's why it's so difficult for a, someone with chronic fatigue to actually recover because they don't get the brain and the body talking to each other. Now, sometimes that's coming out of too much water, drinking too much water, but often it's because the food choices aren't right. There aren't enough minerals. There aren't enough enzymes to do the digestive work because the, the liver function has been affected by glandular fever, Ross River, Burma Forest, or now we've got COVID. Any viral effect on the body or any trauma effect on the body mean the body is in constant stress. And these are the things which lead to chronic fatigue syndrome. If the salts go too high, this is where you're going to get high blood pressure. You're going to get strokes. You're going to get heart attacks. All in these areas because the pressure is so great and you also get into the diabetic type syndromes as well. Does that all make sense? Yeah, it's amazing. It really is. It's one of those things I think so many people just see the outside of the body. You know, like when you're going through explaining this, I mean, having the awareness of what's actually going on on the inside so you can then be better informed has to be the way to go. You know, like it, I think it, it's, it's a, otherwise it's a bit of a guessing game, isn't it? It is very much. This is a priority for me with each client that I see is to say, mm. okay, what, where are you biochemically and what's happening mm. with you? And because I give it to them in black and white in a report, they can't ignore it. You know, they, they cannot. Well, they follow. can, but at their own peril, I suspect. Yeah, they ignore it at their own peril. You know, yeah. and I've had people where I've looked at the numbers and I said, you know what, that person is liable to have a heart attack. And, you know, a couple of weeks later, yep, they had a heart attack. Um, mm. Because you can tell from the numbers just how bad the condition of the blood is. And the, the thicker the blood, the, hard, the higher the, the salts in the blood and the higher the uh, protein waste in the blood and the higher the out of balance the pH is, all of these things go towards um, affecting the health of the body. So this is one of the major reasons why sportsmen can go, die of a heart attack because they're not drinking sufficient water. Anybody who doesn't drink sufficient water is going to end up with thicker blood because they've got thicker blood. Their heart has to work harder. If the heart has to work too hard, it can be working like 28 hours in a 24 hour day. And it has to push the blood harder around the body to move it around the body. So yeah. it's so, interesting though, David, what, as you were just saying that something that jumped into my mind is that quote that says, you know, measure what matters, but know what matters. And I think, yeah, like we were just saying, if people people might not like it because it's in black and white, but then they know what their options are, don't they? So then it's a case they of, do. I suppose, you know, this isn't a fad. This is reality. This is what your biochemistry is telling me today. And, and you've got that. You can come back and remeasure it. And I dare say, even for the busy people, identify what's the priority because all of these four building blocks are critical, but, you know, like your example with the heart, somebody, you know, I mean, that would be an individual thing, I guess. You'd decide what the priority for that person was here and now if they, they yeah. only wanted to start slowly. Well, if, if I had someone who had, say, a 40 to 50 uh, salt level, yeah. right, I, I would be drink, giving them water to drink in the clinic yes. right before they left, right? Mm -hmm. Start to drink water now. Because, you know, people say they drink water, but they come in here where you do a 90-minute session. It might be hypnotherapy or talking about their health, working out what foods for them to eat, what the program is for them to follow, or doing some counselling. And what's or coaching. And what, what happens is I'm, I'm watching them and I've got a glass of water there and they're not drinking. Mm -hmm. right? So they're coming to me and they're saying they're drinking water, but they're sitting there for 90 minutes and they're not drinking anything. So... I always check that after half an hour, say, time to have a bit of a drink, I think, and, and get them to actually get into that habit of saying, yeah, you know, every half hour I need to drink something. It doesn't matter whether I'm doing an appointment, doesn't matter whether I'm sitting in my car, doesn't, I always carry water with me. You know, that's one of the things that keeps me youthful looking. <laughs> um, it, it's really important. 
It's really important. People who, who want to build collagen, who want to slow aging, who want to do those things to help their body, one of the most important things is to do that thing about water and get the right amount of water into their body. Yeah, I just find so many people think they are, and yet when we, we get them to sort of just track it for a while, they're often horrified at how little they do drink. Yeah, and it's these are the common. things that happen, you know. The pH of the blood, well, the pH of the blood, this is, this is the uh, confusion that's happening with everybody saying you have to be alkaline, right? You do mm. have to be alkaline because otherwise you die, but that's the pH of the blood. That's not the pH of the urine. Right? The pH of the urine needs to be slightly acid to say that the body is taking the acids out of the body. But the pH of the blood needs to be between 7.35 and 7.45. If you vary very much, and if you go either side of that, if you go either side of that, the tendency is to death, right? So if you go too far this way, it's death. And if you go too far that way, it's death. So it's a very fine line. But what actually happens is that when, when a person has their pH of the blood start to slide, they have to get minerals to buffer the blood. Now, where are they going to get the minerals from if the minerals aren't in the food because the person's eating you know, fast food or not looking after themselves and eating the right food for their body? Guess where they get the minerals from? Their bones. Their bones. And their lungs, they get mm. the vitamins, a vitamin A from their lungs to, to do other things. They break down the lungs, they break down the bony structure, they break down the prostate, they break down the breast. You know, there's, there's a whole range of different places that the body will take minerals from in order to survive. Mm. So the body is great at using what it has. Now, if you're putting too much salt, too much sugar, too, everything gets sticky in the blood. If you've got the right sort of blood and you've got the blood floating around, then the blood here can carry more oxygen and glucose to the brain than this can. So everything's all sticky. Now, one of the problems with this is it's not going to move around the body and it can get stuck as plaque along the wall of the artery. So this plaque here eventually leads to blockage. Now, what the body does, it then produces cholesterol in, because cholesterol is a slippery substance, it produces excess cholesterol to get this blood to be able to move around the body and take the pressure off the heart. Science looks at the high cholesterol and says, we've got to get the cholesterol down because someone's going to have a heart attack if they have high cholesterol. I look at the cholesterol and say, we better get some water into this person so that the, and some B-group vitamins so we can break up this relaying which is going on in the blood. And then they won't need the cholesterol medication because the, the liver won't produce the cholesterol it won't need to and that's the difference of looking at things naturopathically or looking at things medically medical often sees the problem from the point of view of this is what's happening within the blood without reasoning as to why it's happening within the blood oh i don't know why it produces more cholesterol but we better get it down but I say the pill is the only option, perhaps. Yeah. And I think that, you know, I just wish more people could sort of understand or appreciate what's actually going on in their, their body, I, I guess, because then they could ask more questions as, as well. But I think, unfortunately, the medical system you know, doesn't allow a lot of time to explore it, do they? So therefore, the pill becomes quick and simple. But if it doesn't change what's really going on in the body, it's still going to be perpetuating into other problems. Yeah, well, and, the, and the major difficulty is too, because this isn't taught in medical school, Yeah, uh, then you, the doctor doesn't know it. You know, this, is, this isn't even taught in naturopathic school, really. Yeah. This is part of the work that Reams did to understand why the body was producing higher cholesterol levels. So high salt leads to relaying and, and clogging together of the blood, thick blood, syrupy blood, high salts, high carbohydrates, and that leads to the body producing more cholesterol and that leads to hardening of the arteries as well. So if you've got excessive salt in the arteries, you are going to get a pickling of the wall of the artery. So you begin to get atherosclerosis building up on the wall of the artery. You're also going to get the uh, osteoporosic type conditions where the body is taking 
minerals from the bones that it take the magnesium, potassium, calcium uh, from the bones in order to um, buffer the blood. So if the, if the pH starts to go out, then the, the body is going to take from the bones, from the system itself, what it needs to buffer the blood. And then there's excess going to be mixed up in everything in the blood. And that excess is going to mean there's going to be sticky bits on the walls of the arteries and you'll get blockages. And eventually this will be much smaller channel and there's going to be hardening of the arteries as well. Whereas if you can keep things at the right level, keep the right water intake going, then the water intake and the other nutrients that somebody takes keeps the arteries healthy and keeps the blood flowing. So high salts leads to cholesterol, high carbohydrates leads to diabetes, excessive heat in the body. So now that's a funny one. A lot of people complain of heat mm. and they, they, and the heat in the body is caused because of the fermentation of the food in the body and the fermentation within the blood system of the sugars. So every, the body itself is making more sugar from the sugars that are being produced there. It's, it's basically fermenting what's going on. And yeast infections, candida infections can also develop there because of that as well, because they feed on the carbohydrates in the blood and in the in the bowel and then there's the high undigested amino acids so people generally have too much protein and if they can't digest the protein those protein particles are going to be also circulating in the blood and they have to be pushed out but they're part of this whole business about the relaying and the heavy pressure that's in the vascular system and that can lead to heart attack and stroke so you know we we have enormous amount of strokes enormous amount of strokes happening that are unnecessarily happening because people basically aren't drinking enough water and are not looking at the food they're eating and seeing where that food is going to and how it's going on one level it sounds so simple doesn't it and yet it's obviously extremely complex and well it's complex up to the point where you say hey let's start drinking some water and see what happens hmm. all right just starting there and then you start with the right food and you can change the pH and you can rebalance the body. And that works with the hormonal system, that works with everything. This is the nitrate nitrogens, which are in the blood as well. And when you have high levels of nitrate nitrogen in the blood, uh, that means there's going to be thicker blood. So that's what we call a danger zone when we're doing the RBTI testing. When we have low levels of nitrate nitrogen or appearing low levels it usually means the body is accumulating waste somewhere and it's not flushing it out it doesn't mean it's not there it just means it's in a danger zone and one of the things that we look for then we look for um, the tumors in the body we look for headaches uh, pressure in the head all sorts of different things happening in the head area because of these signals that are going on so people with tight band around the head confused thinking all of those, those conditions are caused by poor digestion and elimination. So our purpose is to say, okay, what can we do about that? And then we have the ammonia, which is an understanding about the elimination through the bowel. And when we go up to a higher number, we start to get into a danger zone again, because this is toxic bowel. And toxic bowel means the person hasn't been drinking enough water, but it also means the person is reabsorbing toxic waste from the bowel. So whenever we see these sort of levels or we saw very low levels, they're not as big a concern in this test as the other one, but we see the high levels, we're looking at what we call a toxic bowel. And that's usually because the person isn't drinking enough water and therefore they're reabsorbing putrefactive water from the bowel itself because the body doesn't waste anything. It will pull what it needs to out of the body. And if the person hasn't drank sufficient water, there's not going to be there to be pulled out. So that's, that's where our elimination of the waste material comes in. And that, that tell, that's part of the RBTI as well to tell what's going on with that test. And then 
simple things to change your health, you have to know your goals. And this is what we teach people is, okay, as a naturopath, I can only do so much. I can help understand what's going on with the body, but I need a person to contribute to go along with it. So, and the first thing is to be specific about what they want. So if somebody comes to me and said, yeah, I want to be healthier, that's not specific enough, you know, but to say, look, I've got aches and pains and I want to get rid of the aches and pains. And I've got this, this thing and I'm, I'm in a pre-diabetic zone. I want to get out of that. I want to get back to a safe zone. Can you help me with that? Or I've got these blinding headaches and I don't know what to do about them. Can you help me with that? And the answer is always yes. You know, unless there's something untoward that we really don't know, the answer is usually yes. So, and basically it's about teaching client skills. And that's, again, would be what you're doing, no doubt, Jenny, is teaching clients new skills that they don't know so that they can go on and do stuff themselves. Yeah, well, certainly encouraging awareness. And even when you said there about um, someone wanting to be healthier, I, you know, given what you've just shared with about the RBTI, I would think that would even be a good starting point because often people say they want to be healthier, but they don't know what that really looks like. Whereas when you, you've got that information and those measures, you know, and, and you've got the implications of those measures, that's a starting point from which you could then fine tune some, some goals, I would imagine as well. Yeah. Absolutely. And then, you know, with the skills, so the skill is, you know, I'm okay, I'm writing out a diet for someone, what's the skill they need, they need the skill to be able to follow it. They need to, if I say to someone, accept everything, right, doesn't matter what it is in your life, accept where things are now, and accept everything that's been in your past, even though you may not like it, the moment of accepting it means you're letting go of the pressure within the body. And once you let go of the pressure within the body, the stress goes. So the importance is that a person, once they learn how to let go of things, and that's a skill, is then able to go on with their life more in a forward direction because they're not holding on and thinking constantly about what's happened in the past that's brought them undone. Then to look at it, whether it's sustainable for the person, is it something they can do? Do they have the money to buy the food? Do they have the money to buy the supplements? Do they have the will to keep doing what they can be doing to get the result that they really want? Because there are conditions that people have to go through to be able to do that. And do they really want to? Because if it's only a wish list, it's not really a, a want. Because to me, if I desire something, if I really desire something, I will do 110% to get it right? And it, it's more important than anything else is to say, yeah, I want to be healthy. Well, okay, what would that look like? Ah, oh, yeah, okay, I've got abundant energy. I'm feeling really good. My, uh, my skin is great. I'm, I'm thinking clearly. You know, all of these sort of things, you have to want them. You have to desire them. And when you desire and want those things, there are ways usually to get them. And then it's about maintenance, uh, am I willing to maintain the suggested changes? So, and those are the things that I ask, you know, for a person, look, we can help you get there, but then staying there means you can't go back and do the things you used to do because that's what puts you there in the first place. And I, I see that constantly with people, you know, that they, they haven't dealt with the inner world that put them there in the first place. And they're also, I, I think there's so many people who are so influenced by the outer world yeah. um, as well in terms of what the latest fad is or, or whatever, without sort of that understanding of themselves, they then don't know how to interpret that outer world. So therefore they, they're prone to on, off, you know, all or nothing type thinking yes. and wondering why they still are in the same situation. Yeah, and that's where coaching comes in, counselling mm. comes in, is to help them move through that. So the seven major areas of concern, you know, eliminate or reduce dietary um, stress factors. So if somebody's eating, like with Reem's work, RBTI work, one of the no-no foods is pork, ham, pork, bacon. And the reason is that's too much like our own flesh and therefore it burns our flesh out faster. So... That's the reason why Reem's found that most people with health issues, 
if they stopped eating pork, would get a better result. So just that one simple thing. There's other foods as well. Wheat, um, dairy, you know, nightshades, all different sorts of things, onion and garlic sometimes need to be eliminated. And there's other foods as well. And one of the things I've trained myself to do is to tune into people and say, okay, these foods are not working for you. These foods are going to cause you problems. If you continue to eat these foods, you're not going to get the results with the RBTI that you would otherwise get. So are you ready to cut those foods out of the diet? You may be able to bring them back later, but for now, it's important to cut them out. The second thing is enzymes to improve digestion. So the enzymes are the active forces in the body and there's multiples of en enzymes around, some good, some not so good. Um, but using the right enzymes to improve the digestion means you're taking pressure off the liver. And because you're taking pressure off the liver, the liver can heal faster. And because the liver does about 2000 different functions in the body, it's really important that the liver heals because people are running around with fatty liver. A lot of the diabetes is caused by fatty liver and it's fatty liver, not from alcohol, but from sugar. So the enzymes and using the enzymes means that digestion is going to work better. It takes the pressure off the liver and the pancreas and the liver and the pancreas can then restore their energy, their integrity better. Improve, this is a big one too, helping people improve their bowel elimination to two or three times daily, but not in the form of diarrhea, but just a, a gentle, easy bowel movement that, that is without a lot of wind or discharge or anything else, just a decent elimination. Stop or reduce inflammation. Inflammation is one of the major causes of what they call autoimmune disease. If you stop the inflammation in the body, there's no more autoimmune disease. And so to me, it's important to reduce and stop the inflammation. The foods that tend to inflame the body more than anything else are the nightshades for people who've got aches and pains. So um, the tomatoes, potatoes, capsicum, eggplant, but there's others as well. If they're smoking and they have inflammation, tobacco is part of the nightshade family as well. And that's all part of the deadly nightshade family. And it's, and it's disaster for anyone with arthritis or most people with arthritis, should I say, rather than everyone. Improve your immune function, you know, especially now with COVID, especially now with the vaccine, build up the immune function, do the things that the immune function needs, take the pressure off the lymphatic system, build up, take the vitamin C, take rose hips, do things that are going to improve the immune system, astragalus, echinacea, whatever it's going to take, build up the immune function, build up the liver function. And the body is a self-correcting mechanism. So it will tend to correct itself once you start to do these things. And then find the correct acid alkaline imbalances. So if the, if the body is too alkaline, bring it back to slightly acid. If it's too acid, bring it back to slightly acid. And that means we do that with the calcium powders, but that's only to feed the liver because the liver is the organ that does the rebalancing. The liver, you know, it's, it's a fallacy to say that, you know, you want the body alkaline. It's not what you want. You want the blood to be alkaline, but you want the body through the urine and saliva to be slightly acid so that you can digest the proteins that you're going to put into the mouth and support your endocrine and hormonal systems. So, and unless the liver is functioning properly, you can't have a correct endocrine and hormonal system. So a lot of the problems that people have, a lot of the problems that they get HRT for or any sort of rebalancing of the menstrual cycle or the, the guy's prostate problems is all to do with an imbalanced liver function and it's to do with poor mineral function. And we, what we do is check the biochemistry chemistry regularly just to make sure that everything's on track, make sure that people are heading on the right path rather than going off on a tangent somewhere and thinking that they can go onto uh, YouTube, for instance, and find this wonderful wonder drug and that's going to fix all their problems. You know, they, the, uh, the stuff that's out there is is one shot wonders, you know, with all different sorts of things, but it doesn't balance the biochemistry. 
It's, and if you don't know what your own biochemistry is, you could be doing more harm than good, I get it, I'd imagine. So yeah. what when you say regularly, what what is regularly? Um, because I work intuitively a lot, I don't I don't do it every fortnight or every month in the initial stages. I usually do it every two to three months. Mm -hmm. Someone who's just starting out doing RBTI would usually do it at fortnightly or monthly just to see where things are. I'm, I'm more inclined to look at the um, where people are emotionally as well and spiritually as well, mm -hmm. because I look at it from physical, mental, emotional and spiritual viewpoint. I look at those four steps and say, OK, what's the major issue here? Because what I know from my own practice and my own experience is that if somebody's got a spiritual issue, there's no point in treating it physically. Right. And likewise, if they've got a spiritual issue, there's no point in treating it. Um, sorry. If they've got an emotional issue, there's no point in treating it spiritually or physically. That we have to clear the emotions because the emotion is causing stress. We have to clear the spiritual issue, get the person on the right path. And that's, you know, the wellness coaching side of things that we're talking about, Jenny. Um, because unless somebody is on the right track, they're, they're liable to be utilizing two or three times their energy that needs to go into improving their health. So, because I've seen people with great lists of supplements they're taking and none of it's being absorbed, none of it's beneficial, it's not being absorbed properly. So when people come in, I, I look through the type of supplements they're taking and usually there's two or three which will work for them and I might add another one or two, but generally most of those supplements are useless for that person because they're not doing what this does. They're not looking at the biochemistry and making sure it's rebalancing the biochemistry. So this is the sort of checklist I use is to go into, okay, have they got the right minerals, the vitamins, the amino acids, the enzymes, the probiotics, the, pre, the prebiotics and probiotics, the herbs. Do they need some spices? Like if they've got uh, problems with their blood sugar, cinnamon, for instance, is good. Would they would they utilize some other herbs as well as things? Homeopathy spelt wrongly there. Sorry about that. Homeopaths and the vegetable fats. You know where are their fats? Where are essential fatty acids? And what what's the situation with parasites? That's another thing we check with the biochemistry. Is there a likelihood of parasites? The numbers can tell us that. Do they have worms? Do have they got yeast and fungi? And is there decay going on in their body? What's their environment like? You know where are they? Where are they living and what's the environment like? Is it dark? Is it moldy? Is it, um, you know, is it, uh, in, you know, just unpleasant to live there because of the neighbours? It doesn't matter what the issues are. What are they going to do about it? And are the issues physical, mental, emotional, spiritual? Does it have to do with past life? That's where the hypnotherapy comes in. Is it theirs or is it energy attachment? Is it from childhood? Is it from relationship or work or their teenage years? So I'm looking at all of those things to say, okay, what are the major issues here and what can be done about those issues? Because everything on that list can be dealt with. It's only that um, uh, people have to be willing to follow through and deal with those issues and look at each area of those issues and say, what else can I do to, to improve my body, function, the function of my body? What can I do and how can I do it? So, big story. It is. So that was us putting it together. And thank you for being here. And if Lara's here as well, thank you, Lara, for I being am. here. Yeah. Thank you, Lara. I hope yeah, you got some you. of that. Yeah, I did. I'm sorry I was a bit late um, yeah, getting here okay. Zoom link. Yeah, we started um, a little bit late, so that's okay. Not a oh, problem. Okay. So I'll just stop the share now and we'll go back to... Me. Um, <laughs> and any questions, Lara, that you have? Uh, is there anything that you're, you looked at that and said, mm, I don't know about that. I don't know where I am or I don't know what I need or, you know, or yeah, I, that's helped me I, way or that way? Yeah. I think um, I'm obviously 50 now. So some of those things we just touched on at the end around hormones and, and things like that start to come into play. Um, and I did have a question around, uh, I've got um, a GP who wants me to go on HRT and I refuse to do it. 
Um, yep. There are some more natural type, what they consider natural progesterones and things. Um, but from what you were saying, David, I think it, I think you feel that it's just you can do it with food. Is that you right? Do it, you do it with food and minerals. Yeah, in yeah. the main, you do it with food and minerals. You may need some herbs, but yeah. that would depend on what sort of herbs were needed. But yeah. there are herbs for menopause. There's chase tree. There's um, port arco. Sorry, not port arco. Uh, Don quai. There's mm -hmm. other herbs as well, which work really well to help women through the menopause. Mm. Um, yeah. And usually, I mean, this is how it usually is when when I'm working with someone, um, and obviously a woman. Uh, one of the questions I ask is, what are the menses like? Because if the menses are upsetting, if there's any pain swelling, bloating, discomfort, mm -hmm. cramping, any of that, it is likely that there's going to be a problem in menopause. Yeah. Right? And, the pro and the reason is the minerals are deficient in the first place. And if the minerals are deficient in the first place, they're going to continue to be deficient in, this, in the menopause because in the menopause and in the menses, women need much more calcium. They need much more of the right calcium's oh. to balance yeah. their body. So if they're not getting those calciums, they're not getting the magnesium, they're not getting the minerals and the potassium that is needed by their body, their mm -hmm. body can't balance the hormones because the liver needs those minerals. And without yeah. those minerals, the liver can't function effectively. Yeah. And I also was wondering about uh, carbohydrates because, um, I mean, GPs, integrated GPs, I think they call themselves now, they talk about women... In, who are in menopause, um, not you know, cutting back their their carbs and things. So, I guess I was just wondering if I need to moderate the diet that we initially, put, you know, initially put together for me, David. Yeah, not necessarily. Oh, um, okay. Your yeah. your carbohydrates and your proteins and fats uh, would all be in that diet as long as you're having a breakfast, morning breakfast, morning tea, lunch, dinner. Yeah, it's not too great um, and doing some form of exercise to stay fit. I yeah. mean, that's yeah. that's basically what you're looking at. And the more that you are helping your body do that, um, the, the better your body is going to function. Yeah. As long as you're not overly stressed, it's the <laughs> stress which interferes with everything else. Because yeah. what happens with the stress, the stress affects the adrenals that affects the release of adrenaline and cortisols. The adrenaline and cortisols mean that you may not sleep properly. If you don't sleep properly, your hormonal system will go out of balance. Yeah. So that these are all the different little connectors that you've got to look at to say, okay, then I need to know that I can sleep properly. If I'm sleeping properly, I'm not going to be stressed. If I'm not stressed, my body is going to function much more effectively. And, and that's really what we're looking at. How do we get that body to function more effectively? Mm. And the more you can do that, take the pressure off the adrenals, take the pressure off the liver, the pancreas, the thyroid, and the thymus, and your body will restore its energy much easier. Yeah. Okay, so I'll just keep going, and then I probably have to talk to you about some vitamins and things again so. yeah it, it, it is important i think for you and it's also about what level of um, stress you've been able to release yes yeah, true the, yeah it. it's um you know I, I i've gone off the bandwagon slightly i think a little bit at the moment but i'm still keeping up my water and everything so yeah i guess I, it might be time to just have a chat with you but, yeah um, we can do that at some stage yeah. it's not yeah. a problem and Jenny, for you, any questions as to where that's uh, that's all gone? No, I think that was really good. I think that I love, I mean, I had an understanding of naturopathy in terms of being holistic, but I really like the, you know, refreshed thinking around the RBTI because I think it, it gives you things that, you, you know, you can't necessarily name. And, and when you see that and, and then you put that plan in place and you know I recognize some of the people I work with that might take a little bit of time to get there because you've got to work out you know what they can do but at least if they start moving in the right direction and feel better it's going to be an incentive to keep going isn't it and the fact it that 
Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I go, I go back to the first time I did the RBT. I mean, numbers were terrible. <laughs> yeah. I mean, really terrible, and as bad as pretty well most people I've ever seen. But I was young. You know, I was younger then. I was thirty. <laughs> years younger. You know, I was forty. Yeah. So, so you know, from the part of what I was doing at the time. The pressure that I, that I, internal pressure that I felt was the stress pressure I felt because I was, you know, actively engaged on the, on the committee of the Complementary Medicine Association. I was working, you know, long hours with lots of clients. I was doing a whole lot of stuff that was putting pressure on my body, but I was also eating badly and that was affecting, you know, my sugar level. So I felt okay, yeah. which is fine until I did the test. And then it was like, Oh my God. Okay. And then I started drinking water. I just started drinking water. That's all we did to start with. And initially, because we were doing a bit of cleansing at the same time, my energy just went boom, straight down the toilet very quickly, but then it came up and started to stabilize. And what I find if I do the right things by my body consistently, if I drink the water, if I take care of myself, if I look after myself, then my energy will stay consistently right through the day. And I take more, I take supplements, more supplements than I'd recommend for my clients because I know the value of the supplements, what they do, how they work, and the energy that I get from those specific supplements. So, you know, I take the, the B vitamins, I take the digestive enzymes, the other digestive enzymes, you know, the... I take vitamin E. All of these things are there because I know how they work. I know what they do. And I know that they are going to benefit me. And if they're not going to benefit me, I don't take them. Mm. I also regularly test myself for zinc because zinc is needed, especially as a, an aging male. I need zinc and I need to make sure that my zinc levels are up so that my prostate works effectively and my enzymes are being made in my body effectively. So, mm. These are, these are all things that I, that I look at for myself and for friends as well and family. So, you know, I'm not doing anything I wouldn't recommend for anybody else. Hmm. Yeah. Sure. And it's recognising, as you said, that there's so much scope, but when you know what's going on within your own body, you, you tailor that plan to, to meet those needs. As you said, that, that just reminded me, I, anytime I've had digestive enzymes, I've, they've, well... I won't say they haven't worked, but what I've ended up having is a lot more sort of like a reflux type reaction. And as a result, I tend to stop taking them. I mean, is that normal or what's that sort of saying? Well, it depends which digestive enzymes you take. Some of them have got too many things in them mm -hmm. and you may need to go lighter. Okay. Um, for you, there is a papaya enzyme that you can get. Okay. It's a liquid papaya enzyme. It's Roche brand produced here in Queensland, papaya 35. All right. Well, I think I need to do the RBTI again. Yeah, that would be <laughs> beneficial for it's you. It's been a long time since I Yeah, did. it has been. It has been. Yeah. Yes. Well, look, I hope that's been beneficial for everybody. It has been yeah, really good. Thank you. And then this will, with your permission, I'm going to put this up on the YouTube channel and you'll be able to go through it again. Um, look at it. Um, just any questions you have, shoot me, shoot them through to me by email. Happy to answer anything. Not a problem at all. I know that was really um, helpful. Thank and you. that goes for anybody else who's got a problem, health issue, Anything else, if they want to know how to deal with most health issues, shoot an email through um, david at mindbodyacademy.com.au and um, I will get back to them. So thanks, everybody. So do you recommend that before just launching into the RBTI? They probably they need to talk to you anyway to, to get the RBTI process started anyway. I'll yeah, the say. other thing is that I get them to go into the uh, to the website and down and fill in some forms, a case history form and a stress evaluation questionnaire. So the stress evaluation questionnaire is important because it, it talks to me about traumas 
depression and anxiety, right? And I'm, I'm looking at it to pinpoint what's the major issue we need to deal with first. So okay. because if somebody has got a lot of stress, um, the B vitamins particularly, uh, they used to be blue, now they're green. Um, mm. B vitamins particularly help cope with that stress level because it helps the neuro, you know, the neurotransmitters that the body needs are made in the gut. So the neurotransmitters are made in the gut transported the brain. But obviously, if you've got too thick a blood or too thin a blood, you're not going to get the neurotransmitters effectively into the brain. Mm. Mm. So it's, it's all about the balance. So how do we bring the balance into the right form so that someone can get the results that they're actually looking for? And that's why I want people to fill in those forms and tell me what they want. Because what a client wants is super important to me. That's the thing I'm helping them to get. doesn't matter what it is. I want them out of pain. That's that little poster on the back, path out of pain. I want to get them out of pain if I can at all. And mostly that's doable. And it doesn't matter what the pain is. It doesn't matter whether it's a back spasm, doesn't matter whether it's a neck spasm, doesn't matter whether it's a headache, doesn't matter whether it's a gut ache, reflux, IBS, um, food intolerance, doesn't matter, arthritis, you know, doesn't matter what it is. What matters is what is the person prepared to do to get out of that pain? That's all I'm concerned about. Sounds good. Yeah. So again, thank you yeah. for being here. Love, love to uh, converse with you again. And yeah. uh, have a great, great rest of the day. You too, David. Thank you. Okay. See you. Bye, Jenny. Bye. Bye, Bye Lara. Bye. 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 Bye.